Hey, what's up everyone? I'm Colby from Sanitarium Productions. Back again with another G.I. Joe action figure review. Today we're taking a look at the 25th anniversary release of the Cobra Stinger. Very cool looking box here. Uh, the vehicle itself has always been really awesome. It also comes with the Stinger driver, which is a bonus for us. Comes in a really nice uh, box here, nice window packaging. We've got some really cool artwork in the background. And you can see the figure and the vehicle very clearly. A very nice job with this one. Uh, the top of it, again, we can see the rest of the window box and then the regular G.I. Joe logo on it. Uh, the side has a picture of the Stinger driver. The other side is the actual Stinger. And on the, uh, the back of the box, <laughs> we've got the nice kind of product art Stinger and the Stinger Driver, along with a couple of the other releases out of this particular wave. You could also get the Sting Raider with Copperhead and the Ghost Hawk with Lift Ticket. We may try to get those and do another review of those in the future. On the bottom, we've got the file cards for Stinger Driver and the Stinger. You'll have to cut those out if you want to keep them, but there they are anyways. Again, it's a very cool looking box set. Go ahead and start opening this thing. Uh, this particular one, so we just got a piece of tape here that we're going to cut off. And then we got this little tabby thing up at the top. We'll just pop that out. Try to pop that thing out. Come on. It's in there pretty good, actually. There we go. So uh, this set itself is uh, kind of a fan favorite, so it's a little bit harder to come by, at least boxed. You can still get the actual uh, vehicle itself pretty easily. Slide this all out. We'll get rid of the box here since we're done with that. Uh, on the bottom that just fell out is the instructions and the uh, sticker sheet, so that's cool. We also have taped to the bottom the accessory kit here. Go ahead and uh, slice the tape off of that real quick. Looks like we've got the uh, figure stand and a little pistol in there, so that's cool. We'll uh, take a look at that here momentarily. Uh, we've got a whole bunch of these plastic tabs, uh, twist ties. Go ahead and snip those off to begin with. And hope this thing doesn't fall out and thud against things. Like I was saying, uh, the actual uh, vehicle itself is uh, kind of hard to get in the box nowadays. Uh, but it's not too terribly bad. Um, just kind of have to... Play your cards and uh, wait around till you get one for a price that you like. There's been a couple of different, whoops, <laughs> a couple of different versions of this released. Um, so it came, they did a uh, a version of this for the Tiger Force as the convention exclusive vehicle. Right now I'm just cutting off these little tabs here. They're taped in, so we can get in here to the. Uh, to the figure and the vehicle without any major problems. And I think that's got everything. So the, the vehicle itself kind of popped out here, so we'll go ahead and move that out of the way. Just uh, yank really hard on the figure. Now uh, there's another tab up here I didn't see that's taped pretty well in there. They definitely like their tape on all this stuff, so let's try it this way. There we go. Uh, so anyways, you, uh, they also came out with a uh, Dreadnought version of this in the uh, G.I. Joe Club store. There's the figure. The rest of this is just the uh, backing here. Very nice kind of diorama. It's got a uh, Sky Strikers in the background blowing up all over the place, so pretty cool. But uh, we're kind of done with that. 
So yeah, you got a, uh, a Dreadnought version of this that just came out along with the new Dreadnought figure. So if you're looking for one, you can find it pretty easily. They also released uh, a version of the Vamp that's the same basic mold. So you can get a hold of that one pretty easily as well as part of the 50th anniversary. Uh, this one is the 25th anniversary release though, so um, yes. Uh, let's see, where are we on to start here? Let's go ahead and just cut off all this uh, wrapping stuff here. We've got a couple of rubber bands holding things in place. So we're going to start by just cutting those. Let's see how best we can do this. There we go. Then we'll lift the door open and pull out the uh, twisty tie thing. Throw that in the trash. We also have a couple of these wrapped around the tire wheels on the bottom. So let's pop those out real quick. That's got those. And we've got this uh, crazy contraption holding the missile turret on. So let's see what we got to get with that. Generally, they like taping this thing together. Um, so on the back here, whoop, this thing's uh, sliding all over the place here. We've got a little piece of tape holding this uh, particular flap on. So we'll just go ahead and slice that open and uh, pull that out the back side here. It's uh, basically just uh, grabbing onto the uh, rear, whatever that thing is. And then we've got another piece of tape on the front here, underneath the missile itself. So let's try to reach in here and slice that open. And that should just uh, pull right out. Perfect. And let's see how well this works here. I think we still got a few things to deal with on the side. So there's another little strap that goes all the way across the missiles here that is also taped down. So we'll uh, see where that attaches to. I think it's right here. Slice that open. Do the same thing on the far side. Let's see if that'll just pull out now. Perfect, so we can throw that away. Then you'll have to remove a couple of these missiles to get things working. And they've also rubber banded on the, uh, the two far side missiles, so We'll just uh, try to cut those off real quick. <laughs> there we go. Perfect. Now this entire tray should lift out like so. Throw that to the trash. Uh, then we've got one more rubber band way down here at the bottom of the missile turret. So let's see how we can get in there to that. I'm going to grab my smaller X-Acto knife here and see if I can just uh, get in there to that. There we go. And I think that's everything. So we'll go ahead and reattach the missiles here. Try to reattach the missiles real quick. And the fourth one on the side here. And there we go, we've got the really cool looking Stinger. Uh, the figure itself also has some nice rubber bands on it, so we'll go ahead and slice those off real quick. T 
two sets of those and the figure should lift right out make sure we got rid of all those crazy rubber bands and we're good to go here so very awesome stinger stinger driver the accessory kit we'll go ahead and zoom in now and uh, take a closer look at these We'll start by looking at the instruction sheet that comes with it. Got a piece of tape here holding everything in. Cut that real quick and just dump this out. So we have the cool sticker sheet here, which I'll try to get a better scan of for y'all. And the instruction sheet. Which has the uh, blueprints on one side, the sticker placement at the bottom. And that's pretty much it. So, uh, yes, very cool looking. Here we have the little accessory kit for the figure. We've got a piece of tape keeping it intact here. So let's uh, go ahead and just slice that tape open and dump this out and see what we've got. Not a whole lot here. Uh, we do have the very cool figure stand here. It's a traditional 25th anniversary Cobra stand. Got the raised Cobra logo on the top, single foot peg on the front, code name Cobra Stinger Driver. Beyond that, nothing really special about this thing, but uh, they didn't include these with all the figures and vehicles for the uh, run of the line, so I'm, I'm very happy when I do see them. The other accessory we have is just a little pistol here. Got some nice detail work on it. Nothing extravagant, but it works. So yeah, there is the accessory kit. Let's just go ahead and jump into the actual figure review itself. Uh, as we said in the accessory kit, we got the figure stand, which we will ignore for right now, and just a little small pistol here. Uh, the figure itself has some really awesome detail work going on. As far as accessory goes, he just has this one single knife that's on his uh, left leg in a nice little holster here. Uh, it's the same one that comes with pretty much all of the Cobra Troopers. You just slide that right back in there and you're good to go. As far as the web gear goes, it's got some really nice detail work going on here. If you, we can zoom in a little bit and hopefully keep the light here. Nice pouches all the way around, some really cool looking uh, buckles here, there and about. His belt buckle here has got a nice red color to it. Some more pouches on the side. On the back, we've got more pouches and some more nice highlighted silver buckles there. He also has this really cool looking holster, which is perfect for the little pistol that came with it. So we just slide the pistol in there and uh, you're good to go there. So uh, that's pretty awesome. We don't often get drivers that have enough places to carry their sidearms when we do get them. So it's uh, very nice to see that in place. The helmet itself is removable. Pops off just like most of the rest of these uh, regular Cobra Troopers are. It's got this nice black netting on it, and it is two-tone. It's uh, gray on the outside and black on the center. Fits back on him really nicely. And unlike a lot of the Cobra Troopers here, it's uh, not in danger of falling off on this guy, so that is really good. Looking at some of the rest of the detail work here, got some nice silver buckles on his legs here, some nice black knee pads. Cobra logos on the side, the uh, Stinger emblem on the other side. Uh, you can't see it, but underneath this web gear here, he also has the Cobra symbol there, which is a nice little touch here, even if you can't see it very often. But uh, it's cool that they went to the trouble of going ahead and putting that on there. So very nice there. As far as articulation goes, the head does spin 360 degrees. And we have, well, if we pull his helmet off, we have just a little bit of up and down motion. Not a lot there, but uh, it's fine. It's 
Take his helmet back on there. Traditional ball and swivel at the shoulder joint. Ball and swivel at the elbow joint. And regular just single swivel at the wrist. We've got the chest articulation here. So we've got side to side movement. And we've got not a lot of uh, ab crunch feature going on. It may just be a little sticky here for me, so you do have some in there. The The web gear is not really getting in the way. I think it's just the figure itself is a little hard to play there. Um, beyond that, oops, dropped his dagger. <laughs> Got the uh, standard T-hook at the waist. Double knee joints. and the ball and swivel at the ankle joint. So all in all, very awesome articulation. Comes with some cool accessories. If I can get it back in there. There it goes, perfect. So yeah, this is a really cool looking figure. It's a nice gray and black and red color scheme. It goes perfect with the actual Stinger itself. Very nice figure. Um, we had a couple of versions of this come out, so you can get it as part of the Cobra Legions 5-pack as well. And it uh, just works really well as a figure by itself. So um, I, I do really like this figure by itself, but uh, you add it with the actual Stinger itself and you're good to go here. But uh, yeah, really cool looking figure here. And now we get to dive into the actual Stinger vehicle itself. Uh, this thing was a kind of a staple back in the vintage line here. One of the uh, preeminent vehicles for the Cobra fleet. It is really just a really awesome looking Jeep kind of thing. Got some really awesome missiles on it. It's got armor plating on the doors. It's just really a robust vehicle here. So it's the Cobra equivalent of the Vamp, so it's just kind of an all-terrain vehicle for them to use, and uh, it really works well. As far as the paint apps go, on the front, you've got a cool winch that's painted in silver. You also have this grill here in the front that's uh, silver. Some nice red lenses on the headlights and on the taillights. They do not light up. Not a lot of detail work on this thing. Um, you've got the standard engine here at the front. Uh, unlike the Vamp, this doesn't, it doesn't open up so you can't see into the engine itself. But one thing that we do have here is this cool AK-47 strapped to the hood. So you pop that back off of there and uh, our Cobra Stinger driver has another accessory. Stick that in his hands right here, and he's got a AK-47 to run around with, so that's pretty cool. And again, it just fits on here really nicely, so uh, you don't really have to worry about losing this thing anywhere. Well, normally just fits in there. I'm putting it in upside down again. There we go. It's a kind of a cool feature that you got it strapped to the hood so you don't really have to worry about it when you're inside um, unless you're trying to shoot at somebody in which case you'll want it inside. <laughs> uh, moving on we've got the cool missile launcher here at the back. The uh, missiles themselves are pretty straightforward pretty standard they've got a little bit of detail work on them not a whole lot. They have just these little tab holes on them that attach to the back here on these pegs. You just kind of press down on them and that's what locks them in place. Uh, that's really one of the downfalls of this thing as well is the this attachment system is a little flimsy um, so just be careful with that. But at the same time the missile turret itself turns 360 degrees and it rotates up and down if I can get it to uh, to do that it can go all the way back like that. 
and you can rotate it all the way forward until you're hitting the top of the vehicle so that's a pretty cool feature here flip this over to the side so you can see it a little bit better rotate that thing up and you can fire missiles all day long and not really have any problems as far as uh, details go here on the uh, back side we can turn the missile launcher here <laughs> We do have some nice little uh, engine accessory pieces here that you can see. We'll rotate this thing around a little bit more so we can see the other side. Looks like an extended gas tank or some kind of nitrous oxide system. You know, let your imagination go wild there. On the back side here, we have two foot pegs and a nice little hold bar there so you're... Uh, Cobra figures can jump on the back here and ride around in style as long as they don't get blasted with the fire from the missile launcher. So you have the ability of adding two figures to the back here. You can have more if you just have them like sitting there, but uh, foot peg wise you got two foot pegs so that's enough for two figures. The doors themselves are really cool. They're those wing doors from like the DeLorean. So you just kind of pop that out. There's a little tab here at the bottom. And then this thing just kind of swings up. And you get access to the inside here, which is very nice. Uh, I don't know if we can see in there very well or not. Try to zoom in a little bit here. If we can get some light in here. Maybe you can kind of see some of that. Uh, there's some really nice detail work going on in there anyways, even if I can't really see it very good from here. But uh, they did a really good job of uh, detailing up the cockpit pretty easily, pretty nicely. Very cool looking system there. Flipping it over to the other side here. This door works the same way. Just kind of pop it out and flip it open and you've got driver side access with a cool steering wheel steering wheel does not really turn but uh, anyways it's in there and you can kind of pretend so anyway you just take your figure here slide them into the cockpit you may have to uh, punch him a little bit to get him to go in there and his knife fell out when I was doing that but uh, you can kind of see how it works flip down the door system and you're good to go you have armored support don't have to worry about stray bullets hitting you too much and it looks really nice so yes this is a really awesome vehicle um, I've always really liked this thing and uh, the 25th anniversary really doesn't change a whole lot about it. It uh, makes it a little bit more compatible with the 25th anniversary figures. So the foot pegs on the back are the right size for the new figures. You still have the tow hook on the back here so you can attach like the mobile missile system or the heat seek missile system or any other type of uh, trailer hitch thing that you want to with it. So yes, pretty awesome. On the front, you've got this really cool bumper thing here also. You can run over people with it. The sky is the limit here, so uh, go wild with it. Very cool looking vehicle. Uh, the wheels themselves are plastic, not rubberized or anything, but they got some nice tread to them. They look really nice. Got this nice kind of black glossy sheen to it, so you may have to take a microfiber cloth to it and clean it up a little bit. It does get a little bit prone to fingerprints because it's this black plastic. Got some nice decals on it, kind of pre-applied. We've also got a few extra that we'll apply here in a little while on the sticker sheet. Beyond that though, it's a, this is a solid vehicle. Very nicely done. Pick it up if you haven't because you won't be disappointed.
So there we have the Cobra Stinger and the Cobra Stinger Driver. Very cool little two-pack here. Uh, they did a really awesome job on it. Really can't say enough about it. It's just a really awesome little lightweight vehicle. It, it's an all-around kind of all-terrain vehicle kind of combo thing, and it just kind of gets the job done for them. So the missile system is a little wonky sometimes, uh, but beyond that, it looks really awesome and really badass. So it gets bonus points for that. The figure itself is a really good figure as well. It goes well with the rest of the 25th anniversary line. Uh, so all in all, this is a highly recommended set. If you don't have it already, you definitely need to pick it up. Again, you've got a couple of different options with this particular one. You can get this uh, traditional one, the uh, original kind of vintage-like version. Uh, that's the 25th anniversary release. It's um, not too difficult to pick up, but uh, it's definitely the iconic version of it. There's also the new Dreadnought version of it that just came out from the G.I. Joe Club store. There is also the uh, Tiger Force version that's out uh, from the convention a uh, year or two ago, so you may have to do some hunting to find that one. And there's also, they essentially reused this one for the uh, Danger at the Docks box set with the new Vamp. Um, and to be honest with you, the vehicle itself is just a retooled version of the Vamp itself, so if you have the vamp, you've essentially got the stinger minus the missile system. So it's still worthwhile to kind of look at and uh, to see. So uh, again, I don't think you'll be disappointed if you pick this thing up. So go out and get it when it hits your price point. That's all the time we've got for today, so thanks for watching. Subscribe to our channel if you haven't already. Drop some comments down below. Let us know what you think of the 25th anniversary Cobra Stinger and the Cobra Stinger Driver. If you'd like to see something in future episodes, drop us a line and let us know, and I'll do what I can to see if we can get it in front of you. And until next time, yo Joe.